the deal. Yeah. Yom Asot Hashem Eretz B'Shemayim. Ela Yom Asot Hashem Asot Hashem Yudhevavei Eretz B'Shemayim. We just recognize the faces. You know. Alongside no sense comment that it's few lies, like it does seem like the town has something to. It's not enough to be a town in that. In that scene, the shoes that he's making. The shoes are here. Yeah. You know? I mean, you can't talk to God until he learns. The shoes are not very good. You <laughs> <laughs> can't <crappy> shoes. <laughs> you can't walk on the shoes. 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 You Stubbornness is definitely yeah. a yeah. 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 And it is to uh, the virtue of the way. I mean, if his, if his prayers are low karabuli, then it's not a virtue. Or it's not something that's missing. <laughs> Yeah, it's the one that are recent changes. Let's see that coming. Which one? Uh, Look at the way it's coming. That's true. Which one is not in the world? The Imats Fila Ina Karau. Who mean how? Hmm? Your, your person that you encounter. Um, you wonder whether or not you're an average person. Even if you're in a category, you mean average person. Okay. The end of the episode is the end of the episode. I kept on waiting for the story to the Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm
Yeah, I mean, it's to ordinary people, like you. Yeah. 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 Oh, you mean he is attempting to fight Two minutes, folks, two minute warning. He doesn't have to worry about This is a bit bigger than any. Yeah, that's a bit bigger than any. This is the story before that, I think. I think we went straight, went straight before. Uh-huh. Oh, you mean the... I'm just looking at the page. Yeah. 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 I mean, here it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Specifically about this. You seem to be talking. You seem to be talking. You seem to be talking. You seem to be Okay, group one, start us off. So what do you think this, uh, what do you think this opening of the story is about? What do you learn from it? Both of you were looking at me, but if there's, if there's one thing a true hacham knows, it's to turn to the other people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to mention the other cheek. <laughs> um, the presentation of the hacham as as it says in the very last sentence of part one, that he was so overwhelmed with his own greatness that he, in his traveling home, he suffered greatly on the road since he had no one to talk to because of his wisdom. <laughs> and he did not find lodgings to his liking and suffered greatly. And to this day, we all know someone lives who has never had the perfect steak. Uh, and, uh, it, it or, ho- or hotel room. Or what? Or hotel room. Or a hotel room. Or a pastrami mm-hmm. sandwich that was moist and lean, but not too lean. <laughs> <laughs> However, you had a nice supper. But go back, go back, go back earlier. Go back, go back to their childhood. Mm-hmm. We're going to meet these guys again. Two people who grew up, grew up in the same town and go to the same cater. Mm-hmm. We're going to see them next week or the week after mm-hmm. in another story. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are two people who grew up together and then whose paths, whose paths split. Mm-hmm. But they came, each one came from a bit avot, from a father's house. 
And that sort of feels to me like it represents something. Remember, one, both fathers lose their fortunes, right? Both fathers go broke. But the Tom stays in that town, becomes a shoemaker. And the Chacham, what happens to the Chacham? Um, we, one of the things we talked about was that um, that both the Tom and the Chacham could be aspects of Nachman. That, um, that this was the uh, aspect that was supposed to be taking over you know, the, with his uncle Baruch. Um, his father's ex, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and that... Um, Let's not go there yet. Let's not go to aspects of Nachman yet. Let's stick with a little more of the story itself. First, very missing. You're, you're not wrong, but I just want to mm-hmm. not jump too fast. Um, why doesn't the Chacham stay in the town? It's it's good enough thing. for him. It's it not good enough for him. Mm-hmm. Wanderlust, mm-hmm. Yeah. right? He, he has to. He has to. He has to go. So where does he go? First, Warsaw. he goes to Warsaw. He goes to Warsaw. Warsaw is a big city. He gets to Warsaw with these merchants who took him, and what happens when he gets to Warsaw? It's not good enough. He has to ask around, maybe, are these the right, am I with good people? Mm-hmm. Uh, should I, can I find better people to be with? Mm-hmm. And they say, yes, the people you're with are good people, but they travel so far, you don't want to have to travel so much with them. But then he winds up going to Italy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's very strange. He wants to stay put in Warsaw. So he gets a job as a servant, and when you started the servant, you have to carry, have to have left these heavy things up the stairs, and didn't like that. And so he winds up going even farther than he would have gone before. He wanders and wanders and wanders, mm-hmm. this dissatisfaction. Well, he ends up, he gets farther and farther away from the Jewish community. He ends up in Spain, where there haven't been, been any Jews in Portugal. That's interesting, <laughs> yes, Italy and Spain. But remember, we don't know there's anything. We don't know that these people are Jewish, even, do we? Are the characters in Nachman's stories Jews? Well, he th- Ident- well, are they identifiably Jewish in any way? Well, Isn't there, there, there is a reference to a Gentile. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. The Baal Shem. Some and of the servants. Well, that's right. There's a Baal Shem. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. There's a Baal Shem. Seven, and they saw that he too was misled, and they went from him to the magistrate, who was a Gentile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But so they're sort of Jews, but the, the issue of uh, where you're going to find kosher food in Spain doesn't seem to be, you know, doesn't seem to be on that. He's not, it's not very, it's not very Jewish in that sense. It's really, really characters of the imagination. But what we got from this part was the understanding of what a hacham is when they're not a hacham, mm-hmm. when they're a hacham, mm-hmm. uh, the differential. Um, mm-hmm. Most Chachams think they're chachams. I, I've never yet met a met someone that's modest enough to understand their place. And uh, the understanding of the chacham in terms of the walls that they build up and the inability they have to even grasp the beauty of simplicity sets us up for an understanding in the next pages of the time. <coughs> and even today in, in Buddhist teachings, uh, you read where the, the beauty of understanding the simplicity, the, the act mm-hmm. in, its, in its simplicity, that if you can appreciate the simple act of opening up the door and when you reach to get the newspaper, see the sky, mm-hmm. there's not much more than that if, you, if you're set up to appreciate that. And it's obvious the ha-ha. He was so too busy trying to find the perfect hotel room. <laughs> so we have, we can, we can read the story that way. We can read the story that way. Obviously, the Tom is the good guy and the Chacham is the bad guy. The, the, the Tom is Samer Bechelko. He's happy with wherever he's got. Right? And, uh, and, 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 and the Chacham isn't happy with anything. That's clearly there, but I think that's not all that's there. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. I just a nice little twist. Oh, I don't know. So you, just like you said, that, uh, that the Thomas Hasamath Bechelko to a team. And then from that same section of Pirkei Avot, they ask, Ezehu Chacham. Halamet Mikol Adam, one who learns from everyone, and he learns from nobody. 
almost, you know, he's always better than everybody. So he's like the opposite of what the, of what the section in Pekah Avot says about the Chacham, whereas the Tam is, you know, is fits Beautiful, yes, he goes with nobody, yes. And, nobody, yes. and the very thing that the, that the Chacham would never stoop to study, to be a shoemaker, is exactly what the Tam becomes. So the, you know, so the interconnection between them is always fascinating. Wouldn't stoop, wouldn't go so low as to deal with shoes. Very nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's yeah. a connection between this and the last story you read too, I think, in mm -hmm. that he becomes a goldsmith and a gem cutter. And it's like the, oh, he was seeking the Shishina, the gold mountain, and mm -hmm. um, a castle of, of mm -hmm. gems. So that was where the divine lives. And he's making it himself. He's making it himself mm -hmm. in that Oh, very nice, very, very nice. nice. It, but this theme of wandering through the world we've now seen in three different stories, yes? In the, in the, in the, in the Lost Princess, right? They go wandering and wandering and wandering. There must be a castle of pearl somewhere. No, there isn't a castle of pearl somewhere. And then the guy, um, our, our, our portrait seeker, right, wanders through the world. He, gets, he, goes, he goes up to a higher and higher magistrate. We're going to have that thing here. And he keeps, I think he's in the kingdom of lies, the world of the kingdom of lies. He has to wor work his way through. And here too, we're going to have similar themes. So this, this sense of wandering, and the need to wander, and maybe it's the vanity of wandering here too, because the chacham is, you know, he shouldn't be wandering. By the way, he never finds a wife. He goes looking. He wants. To, he wants to get married. His time gets married right away. The chacham, I don't think, has any relationships. Not only does he learn from anybody, which is very nice, because Hello made me Adam, but 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 he doesn't. He's not related, to, he, except for this ancient memory of his friendship with the Tom, which he somehow, that's interesting, that he somehow preserves that connection. He's not connected to anybody else, uh, but he seems to preserve that connection. Go ahead. He studies gem cutting and he does it very quickly. He becomes a doctor in a half a year, right? Something like that, you know, boom, boom, boom. Quarter, 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 quarter of a year. Quarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. One semester, one, one uh, mini semester. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. he, he goes in, this is skipping ahead a little bit, but he goes into the Baal Shem's house because he thinks this is a doctor. Maybe we'll have something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. with a childhood friend. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I, I, we were just talking about this earlier, actually. actually I, love, I really love that. Um, oftentimes when he begins to entertain philosophical ideas, they always end up being about how, well, maybe this job doesn't have anything eternal about it. Maybe it's just going to pass away. It's just a transitory mm -hmm. thing, which seems in some ways to be repeating that. I mean, the, the fear is that my life is going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is going to disappear. The stability that I once had isn't going to exist. And that seems to be what comes, he seems to be living a philosophy according to that. Yeah, I guess I, I had a similar thought about that, Chummer, but to me, I don't know that the Tom comes out totally socially adjusted. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I think, you know, the, the sort of the reading that I would have, like, if I were to say this is a perfectly adjusted person, this is maybe skipping ahead to it too. But the Tom would have said, oh, this bread is so delicious. I love eating this bread. Oh, thanks for the glass of water. I love water. But what the yeah, Tom yeah, is doing wow. is kind of recreating this life of luxury that wow. maybe he had as a child, but like kind of transferring this fantasy of childhood <laughs> onto a beautiful current situation. No, I think he's really living a life of luxury. <laughs> I mean, I, I see the, there's a lot of allusions to him being in Egypt. So first you have the bread that tastes like anything, yeah, and then yes. you have the water that tastes like anything, mm -hmm. and then you have when he's a shoemaker, that word for loot is the same word, it, it means, means pitch, it's the same stuff that was used water to for basketball hoops. Mm -hmm. So he's leaving the narrow place um, in steps, mm -hmm. and 
so when he's tasting the, the bread, something as simple as bread spirals to infinity in all directions. If you think of where the wheat comes from, that it's raised in earth that's made out of chemicals that came from ancient exploding stars, it means rain, it means sun, it means people to work it, it means people to harvest it, it means people to grind it, it means women to make it with recipes that have been passed down from Rachel and Leigh and Rebecca and Sarah. <laughs> so spiral to infinity everywhere. And he's eating it with intent and he feels it. He's connected to infinity in all of these things he does. And that's what the Chakam is making for us. <laughs> I mean, that's, that is also really beautiful. I feel like, yeah, those are both in some psycho, psychoanalyzing <laughs> where this uh, capacity for fantasy comes from and like taking it seriously and theologizing it is, well, I think both of those pro approaches are <laughs> equally beautiful. One little, <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's right in connection to what you just said is that the, you know, the Chacham and the Tam are both the, you know, among the four children the Haggadah. Yeah. Oh, what the is, what's this? And Man. the answer is, it's the hand of the strong hand of God brought us out of Egypt. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> How come it's not the terms of the Haggadah? Thank mm -hmm. you. So That's obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering also about the biographical aspect. Who was the Hakam, or who were the Hakam in, in Nachman's life? that he mm -hmm. might be kind of <laughs> taking his story out on a little bit and repeat the tongue. Well, in some ways, I think they are the Muscovian. That's what I'm saying. They are the, these westernizing Jews who are studying the most westernized Jews, notoriously so, in the first decade of the 19th century were doctors. Jews who became doctors and pharmacists, they had to learn Latin, and they had to learn not only Latin, but to read the Goyesh alphabet, which Jews almost in principle didn't want to do. You know, your, the alphabets went with churches. Uh, Muslims knew only the Arabic alphabet. Jews knew only the Hebrew alphabet. You know, the Cyrillic alphabet was associated with the Orthodox Church. And Poles didn't learn the Cyrillic alphabet because that was Goyish for them. That was the, other, the opposing church. And so we had to learn, not only learn Latin, but read that, you had to read that alphabet. Well, to be a doctor was, that meant to be very assimilated, very westernized. I was thinking about his childhood, Nachman's childhood. And Nachman's what was expected childhood. of him at the time and his uncle. Well, then there were real Chachamim in his childhood. The answer is, the interesting thing about Nachman's childhood is we have no idea who he learned from. He's much more learned than the other people around him, and he's, you know, he's brilliant, and, but he's absorbed so much material. He can quote verses from Job and Proverbs and so on by heart. There were no concordances to look them up in those days. You know? um, and he just knew an incredible amount. And we don't have a sense of who his teachers were. But there were expectations of him that were different from what he was, what he That's thought. Good, yeah. So I'm yeah. wondering about that right. in terms right. of the story. And you sort of, you know, sort of picture um, this smart Jewish kid and the peasant kid next door who grew up to e next door to each other, you can sort of imagine it, you know, the peasant kid or the, or the, or the just not very, not very smart Jewish kid who was next door. Yeah. So going back to the psychoanalysis, this is being so fascinating to me because it's so different from the way that She's more worldly. She, you know, she knows she knows the score, so to speak. And he, he lives in a kind of holy fantasy world, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and she is she is down to earth the way, you know, 
the way wives of these people often work. You know, so the, I won't say I don't want to say it stereotypically, but the way you know, uh, the person she had to put bread on the table, so to speak. You know, and uh, you know, and he was and he was taking his time with his shoemaking. He was very slow. And yet, also to jump ahead, she is the one who tells him to go to the Baal Shem when he is threatened by this devil of doubt coming in. But I want to say that, going back to your comments, um, so he has all this. He has, with his, with his bread and water, he has all these wonderful things. Whereas the Chacham has silver and gold and precious stones, and he has nothing. You know, he has all this very desirable, expensive, fancy stuff, and it doesn't do anything for him. And he has just bread and water, and he's experiencing wine and steaks and all kinds of, all kinds of great things. Yeah. But he, has, he really has nothing because he has no intent about it. He doesn't see the infinity that's in anything. So it all ends he, up. He doesn't see the infinity. He's the he's the hakam of the time. The hakam. Of course, that's right. He has nothing. That's what I'm saying. In the end. And yet he really has nothing. Well, he, he lacks a sense of wonder. Uh -huh. yeah. He wanders, but he has no sense of wonder. wonder. He wanders, wanders <laughs> about wonder. Uh, are we, have we lost our groups? Uh, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> kind of the first thing. Kind of that yeah. That section was what? We were the section yeah. two about the time. We the time. Uh -huh. I just want to add the one thing that uh, another Pirkei Avot, your ten nechas and your ten daragat, because he's always worried, and yet you have the more possessions you have, the more worry. So he's always, you know, he's always worried. He's never satisfied. He has all this. Mm -hmm. So he thinks another. I guess one of my questions about the second section is. What is what is the Tom's simplicity actually look like? How how simple is it? Is he naive about the simplicity? Like, is there is, is simplicity the same as naivete, or what is, in terms of uh, like the nuts and bolts of it? What does his simplicity look like? How does it play out? Does he have insight? Yeah, does he have insight? Great. That's such a, yeah. It's a perfect way to articulate it. Does he have insight? Is he self conscious about his simplicity? On the surface, it looks like he's not self-conscious. On the surface, it, it seems like he just acts instinctively and is just able to enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mean, your reading of it is that he sees you know, that it's much, there's much beneath that. But uh, the way the shot of this text looks like you know, that he's just, he just enjoys, he's able to appreciate every moment. He's able to be here now. Mm -hmm. I, we would love the expression what sugar and honey shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. any folk expression like that that, I, that comes from? I can't imagine, but it is. What, uh, what's the Yiddish on that, I wonder? Uh, the, yeah, it was the it's. Uh, yep. Um, Vasar a Ziskaita Shichle is Vasar a Honik Dik, Vasar a Sukkah Dik. What a honey of a shoe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh yeah. I just suppose kind of in this, this question of kind of what is he, like I think it's probably worth looking at the last few sentences where there's this whole kind of back and forth about how. Give, he, give us the page number. Um, 148. Mm -hmm. uh, how the, 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 the village folk interact with the town, and so they, yes. they sort of have this mocking relationship. Yeah, good. And, and they like spending time with him, and every time they come to spend time with him, he says, no joking around, right? And they say, we won't joke, and then they start joking, and he, he's aware of that. He's, he's able to respond and says, you know, tell your jokes, but you're still fools. So it mm -hmm. seems to me like there maybe is some sort of... Great. Like, he's kind of unapologetic yeah. about his simplicity, but not unaware. Yeah. Great. Can can we also just look at one forty seven? Uh, this dialogue between him and his wife. Yeah. Uh, the 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 last paragraph. When he finished his shoe, and it probably had three ends because he did not know his craft fully, he used to take the shoe in his hand and praise it and enjoy it very much. <laughs> and he used to say, "My wife, how beautiful and wonderful this shoe is! How sweet this shoe is! What a sugar and honey shoe this shoe is!" <laughs> And she used to ask him, if that's so, why do other shoemakers get three goldens for a pair of shoes and you get only a half tailor? 
Thaler? Thaler. Yeah. Thaler. Mm -hmm. That is one and a half golden. He answered her, what does it matter to me? That is his work and this is mine. So in the Hebrew and in the Yiddish, this is a, this is a I would say, a bad translation. That's his story and this is my story. That's what he tells That's about like his work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's sort of about the way in which you're framing your reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> furthermore, why should we talk about others? Let's begin to reckon how much clear profit I make on this little shoe. So after, after this really interesting comment about, uh, I can tell myself that my shoe is beautiful. He can tell his himself that my shoe isn't beautiful. That's his story. My story is that it's beautiful and praiseworthy and I'm proud of it. After he like gives this claim of, I have a discourse that I'm choosing, that I'm proud of, this discourse I'm proud of, he then gives an economic analysis of the shoe. And anyways, I'm like <laughs> making some money, you know, like these, this is the account, I'm making some money. So that seems like there is some, there's some sort of distance between his, so-called simplicity and his ability to reflect on that simplicity. What do you mean by distance between I'm not sure I get you. Uh, just the, the idea that he's like fully inhabiting to me mood. And when, German, when, when Buber translates the, the story into German, he calls it the, the um, I don't remember the word he uses for chacham, but the word that he uses for, for, for simple men is, um, Einfach, which mm. in German means onefold. Mm. You know, like it's just it's just one like dimensional. A, one dimensional, <laughs> like without any sort of a, without mm -hmm. any sort of fold. And the more yeah. the the more differentiated your consciousness becomes, the more folds your consciousness has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the in 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 sort of the, the German language, like and also in Hebrew, Pashut. It's just a. It's just just a you spread out. Right? Yeah, it's like a single. It's, it's a single it's surface. All, what you see is what you get. You know? yeah, yeah. And he does have a little mm -hmm. bit of a differentiated consciousness, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if this thing with his shoes relates to our former story too. Remember the moon, which represents Malkut, uh, has a problem that the demon sucks her powers out through her feet. So mm -hmm. shoes, his shoes, protect feet. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, be that's beautiful. <laughs> a, lot of, but a lot of people who um, are like the Chacham in the story, you were talking before about that's his story, that's my story. A lot of people that operate like this Chacham operates cannot see how 